Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video, I'm actually going to finally put to use some of the Raspberry Pis that I've had that have just been sitting around gathering dust. So I have four Raspberry Pis. They range from Raspberry Pi 2s to 4s. I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's two Raspberry Pi 2s and two Raspberry Pi 4s. Now what I'm going to use these for is I'm going to set them up in like a Docker Swarm and they will just kind of just be linked into Portana and I can just use this for a lab. And the idea is that I can play around with, uh, you know, containers and services, even if I want to, you know, maybe remove Swarm and go Kubernetes. It's just setting up a little lab environment for me to test things rather than testing on uh, my Raspberry Pi that's running my website or my Zimmerboard that's running other things. I can just set up this little lab environment instead. So that's what this video is going to be about. So what we're going to do now is we'll just have a quick overview of the Raspberry Pis and the switch I'm going to use. Then we're going to flash the SD cards with Ubuntu server. I'm, that's what I'm going to be using. And then we'll do a bit of an overview of the setup, you know, uh, everything plugged into the switch. I'm going to connect to them, get them all set up with Docker, get them connected to Portainer uh, so that then we can manage them and see Swarm and deploy things to them. And then we'll pretty much go from there and I'll probably make this some sort of a series. So this first part will essentially just be getting them set up, connected to Portainer, getting that swarm showing, and then we'll probably call it there. And then the next one will actually be then installing services on them and playing around and whatnot. So let's start uh, with an overview of what we have. Right here. So, um, hello, here's my hands. So the first thing we should look at is the switch. So this is a Ubiquiti uni uh unify switch uh, it's just a simple five port one so we'll have one bringing in the internet and then four uh for each one of the raspberry pis so pretty straightforward uh if i remember i'll leave a link into the description for for this uh, if you're keen to check it out just simple USB C power ethernet done you know real nice and easy so oh and also this has uh poe as well power over ethernet um, so you've got that functionality there if you need it, but I don't. But anyway, that's what I'm going to use for the connectivity for all of my Pis. Uh, so we'll bring in, so this one here is a Raspberry Pi that I was gifted. I believe this is a Raspberry Pi 2. And it doesn't currently have an SD card, but we will, I've got uh, some SD cards. I'll show them in a second. And yeah, we'll just make sure this is all flash with Ubuntu server. This one here is my very first Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this one here, if I open it up, I believe it's a Raspberry Pi 2. Yep, uh, the camera probably won't focus on it, but you can see at the top there it says Raspberry Pi 2. This again was my very first Raspberry Pi and it's still going solid. So um, I'll continue using it as much as I can. And here's another Raspberry Pi. This one here is a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it doesn't have any cooling. It's using a default case, so no doubt it's probably going to thermal throttle. Uh, these are notorious for thermal throttling, uh, so the performance on this probably won't be fantastic, uh, but I do plan on upgrading the case and the cooling at some stage. And then we've got uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, again, but this one is in a flirt case, uh, similar to the Raspberry Pi 2. And I've reviewed this case before, so if you're keen, I'll leave a link to it somewhere in the top. Uh, so go check that out if you're keen on this case. It's it's pretty much a giant heatsink. It's all metal, uh, and when you push the, the board into the case, there's like a little metal dip that sits onto all the cooling, um, onto to like the CPU and the RAM and whatnot. So all the heat is just you know goes across the entire case. So it's pretty good, and the cooling is quite nice. So yeah, so this is pretty much the setup. Uh, nice and easy and then we've got so two of these already have uh, sd cards and they've already been flashed with ubuntu server so this one here is already good to go and this one here is also good to go so the two that we need to worry about are the raspberry pi 2 in the flirt case and the raspberry pi 4 in the flirt case and we'll be using these samsung uh sd cards they're great you know they're pretty straightforward 64 gig i don't need anything massive uh these should be you know they should be fine. So yeah, that's pretty much the setup. So the process from here on is that we need to get these two flashed. So there's a naming scheme I'm sort of going to. And the reason I'm talking about naming schemes is because when I flash these SD cards using uh, the Raspberry Pi imager or whatever it's called, I can choose and settle the host name and stuff in there. So that's where I'll set the host name is when I'm flashing these. And everything is being called like the Pi version and then lab. So it's like Pi 2 or Pi 4 and then it's lab, and then a number. So these are one and two, 
and, oh sorry zero zero and zero one and then these will be zero two and zero three okay so those are the names and that's how and i'm going to configure all of their host names when i flash uh with the sd card so i'll probably show oh i'll be able to show both of them actually i'll, I'll walk you through that process now of flashing both of these and then we'll get them plugged in and hopefully connected right so this is raspberry pi imager it's actually really good it's got a bunch of images that you can use to flash onto sd cards so let's get this pulled out uh let me just get it open right so we've got the sd card we'll put it in the adapter and we'll put it into my macbook and if we go here and choose os there's a few here that we can choose from and i should probably allow it to read the sd card so as you can see here there's raspberry pi OS, uh, but we want to go into other general purpose OS and we want Ubuntu and we'll wait for it to load and then there's a few here so we need to figure out you know remember which Raspberry Pi we're flashing here so we're going to do we'll do the Raspberry Pi 4 first so we can make sure that we grab a Ubuntu server that supports Raspberry Pi and we want the 64 bit because the Raspberry Pi 4 supports 64 so let's find Ubuntu server 64 bit there it is so let's select that choose the storage and we want this one here so now that we've got the the media and everything selected we actually don't want to write just yet there's a couple of things we want to do so we want to hit the settings on this uh, I'm just gonna hit no on this one and then what we can do here is we'll set the host name right so this is going into the Raspberry Pi 4 so following my name is scheme Pi 4 and it's part of the lab and this one is actually going to be uh, zero, uh, 02 so there's zero, 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 001 and this is zero, 02 and we want to enable SSH and we'll just do password authentication I could set it up with my keys uh, but I'm just going to do username and password uh, for the connection so let's go tech docs for that set a password these are going to be connected to Ethernet so I don't need to worry about setting up the uh, the wireless and I don't need to worry about anything else. All I need to worry about is that we can have the host name set up and that I can actually SSH to it um, because I won't have a monitor or anything like that. We'll hit save and now we can have write. And it's gonna say that everything's gonna be erased. Yep, that's fine. And now that's gonna write. So we'll just sit back and we'll wait for that to finish. There we go, so that one there is all done now. So we can hit continue and we can take that SD card out done so we can get this one plugged into the raspberry pi 4 done so we just need to do this one more time for the raspberry pi 2 and then we're all sorted and we just sit back and we'll do the exact same thing and then once it's done that we are good to go with plugging all of these raspberry pis up and getting them uh, all connected right that one is also done so now we have all of our raspberry pis set up uh, in terms of the sd cards and stuff so let's get everything plugged in connected to the switch and we can go from there right so i have everything pretty much set up but it's, it's the most jankiest setup because this isn't where it's going to be uh permanently uh but i just want to showcase you what this is i guess going to look like uh so let me show you uh so this is the setup <laughs> uh again this isn't where it's going to live i'm just all of this is just so i can showcase it so the raspberry pies uh, with the three meter long ethernet cables each uh, running to the switch and then this one here is the actual internet um, okay so I'll go turn all this on and you'll see all the lights and we'll go from there right so everything's on the switch is coming alive and we should start seeing activity happening across all of these and then I should be able to go to my uh, router and I should be able to see IP addresses for all of these and I should be able to start connecting them so what we need to do now, now everything's booting up, we need to figure out what the IP addresses are, right? So the best way for us to do that is connect to the router. Uh, so let's do that. Right, so we can see everything now. So we've got um, the Pi Lab 0, so it's the very first one. We've got Lab 01, which is the second one, running on a Raspberry Pi 4. We've got 02, which is on a Raspberry Pi 4. And then we should have 03, which is running on a Raspberry Pi 2. So we can see all of our Raspberry Pis. They're all connected, even though it's the most <laughs> crazy setup at the moment, but it's all good. So everything's all set up. So now what we can do is we will go through and install Docker on each one of these. And then what we would then do is once we've done that, we will 
we will then create a swarm essentially and i know a lot of people were saying like you know using kubernetes and swarm and when to use one or the other for me personally for just for now docker swarm is a easy way for me to just to play around with things i can definitely turn this into some sort of kubernetes setup at some point but i just want to do docker swarm for now we're going to get them all connected and then once they're all connected, we'll go into Portainer and we'll install an agent on one. And then what happens after that is the agents get sent out to all of the uh, Raspberry Pis in the cluster and they will all just pop up into Portainer. And once we've done that, that's where we'll call the video. And then we'll have kind of a little series on these of just playing around with Swarm and maybe creating Kubernetes cluster. Who knows? Um, but that's the next steps. So now that we have our Raspberry Pi IP addresses, we know what they are. So the next steps are is we are going to install Docker on all four of these. And once we've installed Docker, we're going to start setting up our Docker Swarm. Now, the reason I'm going with Docker Swarm is just because I want to have a play around with it personally. And then, you know, later down the track, once we've got everything set up and playing around, we could do Kubernetes or whatever. It's just getting an initial setup. And then once we've got our, everything connected in our swarm, and I'll go through that process, uh, we'll install a Portainer agent, and then that agent will go across all of the nodes, well, all the Raspberry Pis within my cluster, uh, the, the Docker swarm cluster, and we'll be able to see all of those come up as nodes, and we'll just be able to see and manage everything there. So that's why I'm using Portainer. And yeah, and then we'll go from there. Once we've got it all connected to Portainer, that's pretty much that for this video, but we'll continue on uh, with other videos, you know, playing around with this lab setup. Right, so I know it looks a bit messy on screen at the moment, but uh, all we're doing now is that we're just gonna, I'm just gonna go through some updates and install Docker. And once everything has Docker installed, then I will go through uh, more specifically and show you uh, adding everything into a Docker Swarm and then we'll go into Portainer. So let me just zone away and I'll get all of this set up. Right here. So I'm gonna start installing everything now. Also, if you have an issue with trying to get Docker and everything uh, set up in your environment, uh, on your Raspberry Pis, you might need this Linux module Extra Raspberry. Um, I needed this module uh, for the networking and whatnot to actually work, uh, well, Docker and whatnot to work on my Raspberry Pis. So if you get issues with it and errors and whatnot trying to use Docker, you, you might need this. I'll just have a, I'll have this in the description. Right, so we've got a new layout now. So we've just gone through and installed Docker on all the machines. Let's reconnect back to the Raspberry Pis and let's start sorting out our swarm. Radio, so you can see at the top now, we've got um, Lab 0, Lab 01, Lab 02, and Lab 03. Oh, you can't actually see my mouse. Uh, so if I just go across the tabs, you can see that we're changing from the Raspberry Pi. So all we need to do is essentially I'm going to create one Swarm Manager and then I'm going to connect the other three Raspberry Pis as a um, as workers. So all we need to do is do a Docker Swarm in it. And now this here has now a manager. You can see the wording here. So all we need to do now is grab this uh, string of text and we will chuck that into the other Raspberry Pis. You can't really see it because I'm in the way. Let me move myself. So uh, we're going to grab that command and we'll chuck it into the other Raspberry Pis. So go like that. Chuck that in. Enter. It's now a worker. You are now a worker. And you are now a worker. So if we go back to the main one and we go a Docker node ls, we can see now we have four. So, and they're all ready and running. So the cool thing about this is now that we can spread workloads and whatnot across all of these uh, workers. So to be able to get a better view and to manage all of this better, we can now bring Portainer into the picture. We'll install an agent onto the manager and then the manager will spread that agent out across the other nodes. We don't have to worry about that. So we have one environment within Portainer where we can see and track all of our um, nodes within the swarm. So let's do that. Hello again. Right, so all we need to do now is I've got my Raspberry Pi here, which is where it sits. Um, all we need to do now is go into environments and we'll add a new environment. And this is a Docker swarm environment we would like to add. So we'll start the wizard. And this essentially says, cool, what you need to do is chuck this uh, command, which will create a network and also the service, which is the agent. Um, onto your Raspberry Pi, well, 
onto your node uh, where you want this and I'm going to chuck it on my manager and then the manager will disperse that across the other nodes. So uh, let's just give this a name. Uh, we'll call it lab swarm. And we have to put the IP address and the port of 9001 because that's what's being used here. And then once we've got that uh, running on the swarm, uh, sorry, on the manager, we'll be able to hit connect and Portainer will see that environment and we should be able to see everything in it. So let's grab this and we'll go back to the terminal. Okay, so what I've done is we've gone through and set up uh, everything and I've updated every all the Raspberry Pi's. So they've all been updated and I've just restarted them as well. So what we can do now is we can do a docker node ls like I've done previously. And you can see here, we can see all four now. So we've got uh, lab zero, lab one, two, and three, which is awesome. And lab zero zero is our manager. So what we need to do is we'll go grab that um, command from Portainer and we'll paste it in. So what we can, what we're doing here is we're creating a network and then we're creating the service for the Portainer agent. And now when we deploy it here, what it's going to do is deploy it across all of the nodes. One, two, three, um, and four. The four Raspberry Pis that I have will all get this agent. And then, but we only have to deploy the service once. We don't need to do this on every other machine. That's the whole point of the swarm. So as soon as I hit enter, it's going to create the network. Then you'll see it's going to do four tasks. And now it's deploying it over to the four Raspberry Pis. And then once we, these are all been, uh, once these are all running, we'll connect the manager node, which is this one here's IP address into Portainer. And then in Portainer, we'll be able to see all four nodes because they all have the agents. But we've only, but it's all just been connected to uh, via the manager uh, in Portainer. And then through there, it's able to see all the other nodes. So um, once this comes up, so now it's just going to wait and verify that everything's stable. There we go. So now if we do a Docker service LS, we can see that we now have the agent running on four replicas, so four out of four, which is awesome. All right, so we're in Portainer now, and if I chuck in that IP address and go 9001, right, and hit connect, it's going to connect to that, and you can see environment created, awesome. If we go to environments, uh, then just go home, and lab swarm, we can see we have four containers, and within the four... <laughs> Uh, which are all the individual agents. We have four nodes, a nearly eight gigabyte of total RAM, 16 CPU, <laughs> which is awesome, right? So let's head in here. Let's go to the cluster visualizer and we can see all four nodes. Let's just move my camera a bit so you can see. There you go. So, and you can see, so we've got zero, zero, um, which is the manager and then three workers. Awesome, right? And so this is pretty much the video and everything's sorted, but what I want to cover later on is deploying stuff to this, right? How do you deploy um, services? So we could go at a stack and we could put in here some compose, uh, some Docker compose stuff to, uh, for, to, to deploy the services that we want. Or there's some templates in here that we could use uh, to deploy into our swarm. There's a bunch of things we can do, um, but I think that is plenty for this video. So what we've done is we've grabbed our four Raspberry Pis, we've set them all up with Ubuntu server, we've installed Docker, we've added them to Swarm, and then we've used Portainer um, agents so we can manage everything via Portainer, the deployments and all of that stuff, and just uh, gives us a really nice overview. Just makes life a lot simpler uh, to manage all of this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. If you made it right through to here, thank you so much. Uh, also, let me know um, what you thought of the video, what you'd like to see me do with this, uh, even if it's not Swarm related. Hey, scrap that idea. We, uh, I'd love to see this. I'm keen to hear your ideas. Um, this is a lab for a reason, is to play with. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.